and welcome back to Foul Play. The Flamingos have the next question. Which bird migrates from Arizona to Georgia every fall? Is it an African swallow? Ooh, I'm so sorry, but everybody knows that African swallows are non-migratory. That means your score goes down to zero and the Toucans are today's Foul Play winners. Congratulations! Hey, what's up? This is Caleb Ward with School of Motion. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use this crazy cool new feature inside of After Effects and Premiere Pro. I want to encourage you to go download the free project file over on our website. Inside, you'll find this project file as well as some of the project files we're gonna use for the later part of this tutorial. So let me start off by saying that the workflow between an editor and a motion designer is kind of annoying whenever it comes to creating televised or video content that has a lot of graphics. And what I mean by that is whenever you are creating the motion graphics, there's a lot of creativity involved. But whenever it comes to the actual day-to-day -day implementation of those graphics, it's kind of annoying to have to put together, let's say, 30 different lower thirds, and then if you misspell something, you have to go back in and render it out and re-export. It's a very, very tedious task, and it's really annoying because most editors are too scared to open up After Effects and learn it, so even though you are a skilled motion designer that really wants to focus on being creative, you have to do these tedious tasks, and it sucks, but up to this point, it's really been our only option, but not anymore. Recently in CC 2017, Adobe released this awesome new feature called the Essential Graphics Panel. And what it does is it basically allows you to set up any After Effects project and edit that project in Premiere. Now, this doesn't work automatically, you have to set it up, but once you set up your projects, you can make it really, really easy for really anybody to edit your motion graphic projects, which will eventually free you up to work on creative projects and not just tedious projects that need to get done. So to show how dynamic this new feature is, we've put together this really cool map that is all dynamic. So I'm just gonna kind of scrub through here and show you how it works. So you can adjust the start of the X position here, you can adjust the start of the Y position, and as you adjust it, this kind of hoop here adjust dynamically. So I can adjust the end point here, I can adjust the, uh, the Y, and we can also adjust the height. So I'm gonna set up this graphic really quickly and send it over to Premiere to show you how this works. So we have controls over the distance, but I wanna add in some controls to where our editor can actually edit the text. Right now our map dynamically changes, but I want our editors to be able to edit the text as well. If you go to solo supported properties, you'll see down here that in After Effects, all these supported properties that can be included in the essential graphic motion graphic template will automatically pop up. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrub down here till we find our text. So let's see here, our first city, and I'm gonna drag the source text up here and I'm just gonna type in first city. And then we're gonna grab the source text for the last city and we'll just call this last city. And click away. So just to make sure that this works, I'm just gonna kind of type in a random city here and it does dynamically update, cool. So I'm gonna export this motion graphics template to Premiere, and I'm just gonna save this to my desktop, hit okay, and let's hop over to Premiere. So we're inside of Premiere Pro working on a sequence for Foul Play, and Foul Play isn't just any TV show, this is the most watched TV show on Bird TV, so it's a really big deal that the graphics are perfect. So to bring in the graphics, I'm gonna to go to the Essential Graphics panel, navigate to Window, Essential Graphics, and the Essential Graphics panel pops up over here on the right. So to import our motion graphics sequence, I'm gonna to go to Import Motion Graphics Template, and we will select our map from our desktop and hit Open. So the map automatically popped up over here on the right, and we can just go ahead and drag and drop this into our sequence. And depending on how complex your graphics are, it can take a little more time to load. So it all just depends. A simple lower third will load a lot faster than this dynamic map. So every week on Foul Play, we have to create this custom graphic. And 
Normally, in the past, our motion designer, you, had to create this custom graphic by hand every single week, and it wasn't that difficult of a task, it was just really, really tedious and annoying. But now that we've created this template, our editor can actually edit it, leaving the motion designer, you, free to go do whatever the heck you wanna do. So our editor could then just go in here and adjust the X position, they can adjust the end Y position, and the editor also has complete control over the city name here. So I can go in here and type in Tempe, Arizona, which I believe is a real place. Yeah, Tempe, Arizona, that's a real place. And we'll go in here and we can change the last name to, uh, let's say Joey, Georgia. Sounds like a nice place. And we can even adjust the height to where it's not quite as hooped. Sweet, so let's go ahead and preview what this looks like here. Sweet. So this graphic looks really, really good. And again, we can just go in here and adjust any of the parameters if we want to. And then our editor has complete control over the After Effects template without ever even opening up After Effects. It's super, super cool. Now, it should be worth noting that there are two different types of essential graphic templates. Now, if we go to the browse here, you'll see that we have these After Effects based templates, kind of similar to the one that we just demoed but there are also some other templates included in Premiere Pro that don't use After Effects at all. They actually were created using effects and keyframes and text layers inside of Premiere Pro, and they have some other customization options that could be appealing to some people, but for motion designers, you really don't wanna mess with these. So instead, we're gonna focus on After Effects-based essential graphics template projects. So let's hop back over to After Effects, and I'm gonna show you how to create a lower thirds from scratch using the Essential Graphics panel. And then we'll come back over here to Premiere Pro and I'll show you how this lower thirds motion graphic workflow might work in the real world. So now we're inside of After Effects and we have a very basic lower thirds here. So basically it just kind of animates on and we have our text panels pop up here. Now we want this lower third to be completely customizable inside of Premiere Pro. So what we're gonna have to do is give our editors a few options to choose from. Specifically, we want to give our editors the ability to choose between a single subtext line or a double subtext line. And so we have all of our layers set up here to where we could hypothetically pick between a single line or a double line. And we also wanna give our editor the ability to customize some of this drop shadow here. And that's actually really, really easy to do. So to create the essential graphics template from scratch, I'm gonna to go to window and essential graphics. And this will pop up our essential graphics panel. And the first thing that we're gonna to want to do is make sure that our project is rigged up in the correct way. So we have our control layer here and we have basically a simple checkbox controller. And you can get to that by going to your expression controllers and dragging over a checkbox control. And we just named it two line title. So basically we want to connect the opacity of our line number two text right here and our line number two panel to that checkbox control. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the lock button right here so it will lock this effect control panel. And let's go to our line number two here. And in fact, I'm gonna select it and hit T for opacity. And then I'm gonna hold down option and hit the stopwatch and that will pop up our expression editor. So we're gonna do a simple if then statement. We're gonna do if, open parentheses, and then we're gonna grab our little pick whip here and we will drag it to this checkbox. So we're gonna say if the checkbox is equal to one, which means the checkbox is selected, then we want the opacity to be 100%, right? That makes sense. And if not else, we want the opacity to be zero. And then we're gonna type in semicolon and click away. And the text disappeared. But if we hit the little checkbox here, you'll see that the text pops up. Cool, so we're gonna do the same thing for our second panel here. So we're gonna hit T for opacity, hold down option, hit the stopwatch, and I'm gonna type in if, open parentheses, we're gonna pick whip to the checkbox, and we're gonna do equal equal, which means is equal to whenever you're writing expressions, is equal to one. So if the checkbox is checked, we want the second line to be equal to 100 and we'll do else zero, which means if it's anything but checked and the only option is unchecked, uh, the opacity will be set to zero. So let's click away here. And now if we go in here and check the checkbox, we have two lines, pretty cool. 
So one other thing that I can see that we may want to control is the drop shadow of our panels here. Pretty cool. So one other thing that I can see that we are probably going to want to give our editors control of is the drop shadow for this yellow panel here because if it was on a bright background it might look a little weird we might want to separate that out just a little bit nothing crazy so i'm going to go to our effects and control panel i'm going to type in drop shadow and we're going to drop a drop shadow onto our big panel layer here and instead of black i actually want that to be kind of a darker brown somewhere about like there and then we're just going to feather out this softness here so we're just going to kind of Dial that in here. So now let's go in and start populating our essential graphics panel. So the best way to do that is to make sure that you have the correct master composition selected, and we do. And we'll change the name here. We can do lower third example. And click away here. And to create an essential graphics panel, you will want to hit the solo supported properties button. And this will show any parameter in your timeline that can be edited with the essential graphics panel. So Right off the bat here, I can see that we are definitely gonna want to add in our two line checkbox and we will do two line question mark and click away. And we will also want to add in the name, of course, so we can call this one name. And we will also want to add in the first line. So we'll do first line and the second line as well. Second line. And you see how this makes sense. It, it's all very, very intuitive and easy to edit. Honestly, once you set up your very first Essential Graphics project, you'll be able to set these things up in no time. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. And we can scrub to the very bottom and grab our drop shadow, our drop shadow opacity here, and drop it into our Essential Graphics panel. And we'll just call this drop shadow and click away. So now let's test all of our fields here to make sure they're working. So the name field here, we'll do Flamingo. Click away and it live updated. Let's make sure uh, this line is working. And it is, let's make sure line two is working here. And it is, and we can select this second line button here and just toggle it and you can see that it's working perfectly. And then this drop shadow, obviously, we can go in here and adjust this. So before we put this out, I want to put in a note to our editor and I want to let them know that they should probably not take this drop shadow above, let's say, 30%. So I'm going to add a comment here and say, don't push above 30%. And this comment will actually pop up in Premiere Pro whenever our editor is working with this essential graphics template. So whenever you're ready to save it, go ahead and hit the export motion graphics template button. It's gonna tell you you have to save your project first. That's perfectly fine, hit save. So for the sake of our tutorial, we're just gonna save it to the desktop here. But if you worked in a small office or with a single machine, then you could just save it directly to the essential graphic folder inside of Premiere Pro and you wouldn't even have to touch that .mogert file. But I'm gonna go ahead and select local drive and save it to our desktop. And I just wanna let you know that these .mogert files, which are a new file format that have been created for the motion graphic templates in the essential graphics panel, Man, that is a lot to say. These files actually compile all of the assets necessary to make them work into the actual file itself. So unlike an After Effects template, you don't have to compile all the assets or make sure you have that footage folder. They actually will all be saved into this single file format, which admittedly can make for some pretty large files if you use video assets or high res textures, but just keep that in mind whenever you're working on these projects. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK. Sweet, so let's hop back over into Premiere and test out our new lower third. Sweet, so we're back into Premiere Pro and let's go ahead and import that motion graphic template the same way that we did before. Just hit that little button there and go to lower thirds example and hit open. And we can just drag in this lower thirds to wherever the heck we want to drag it. So let's just drag it right here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just solo this uh, track here so we don't have to hear the, uh, the horrible voice that that announcer has, man. He should definitely not record his voice and let other people hear it. I'm going to go ahead and hit play here so you can hear this just beautiful sound effect. Isn't that awesome? 
So we can actually just go in here now and uh, as long as we have our lower third selected, make sure we have edit selected up here and we can just change the name to, oh, I don't know, let's just make up a name here and click away. And we can also put in a single line and a second line. And we can just check this second line box and you will see that it will automatically update down here in our timeline. And we can also adjust the drop shadow here and our comment is visible right here. Now, let's say for this sequence, you wanted to have two or three more lower thirds. Now, in the past, which honestly might be your present, you would typically have to go back to After Effects, change the lower third, render it out, then go back in and change it again, render it out and duplicate this process over and over until you had all of your lower thirds created. You'd then import them back into Premiere Pro and if you wanted anything changed, you'd have to go back to After Effects. It's really not that intuitive, but the way that it can work with the Essential Graphics panel is you can simply select your lower third right here and hold down Option and it will automatically duplicate the lower third. And so, now you can select the second lower third and you can change this to any other random name and whenever you scrub your playhead over it, you will see that it will automatically update. And so a process that used to take at least five to 10 minutes can now take you literally 60 seconds to do the lower thirds for an entire sequence. Now, this is just scratching the surface of what is actually possible whenever you're using an Essential Graphics panel. You could hypothetically link third-party plugins to expressions which are then controlled by a slider in Premiere Pro, giving your editor the ability to edit, let's say, the Z depth of 3D text using Element 3D with a simple slider in Premiere Pro. It's pretty dang cool. And I'm gonna leave you with a really cool expression-based example. So if you go to this Install Motion Graphics Template button, you can click on the scorecounter.mogurt file. And this file is actually included in the download whenever you download the project files from School of Motion. So go ahead and hit open, and that will import the score counter. And I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this, uh, let's say right here, and then we can adjust the audio channel and then make sure that it's in the right place. So what we have here is a slider based template that goes from one number to another number and then the place can change right here. And this is all completely customizable in the essential graphics panel. So we could adjust the start score to be, let's say zero and the end score to be around 3000 and we can change the speed at which the score is kept. So let's say about three and we can have the person start out in, let's say third place and end up in second place. And then if we scrub through here, you'll see that the number goes from zero to about 3000 and the player goes to second place. It's really, really cool. And again, there are an infinite number of potential creative possibilities that could be had by using this new feature. Now, if you wanna learn more about the Essential Graphics panel, go check out the blog post over on School of Motion. And of course, if you ever wanna learn more about motion graphics or After Effects in general, go check out the training page over on School of Motion. I'd like to give a special shout out to Shutterstock for providing the stock footage for this tutorial and Premium Beat for providing sound effects. Don't forget to follow us on our social channels and we'll see you on the next tutorial.